This is the first video lecture for section 1.5, Algorithms for Solving Graph Problems. In this lecture, I'll talk about the nearest neighbor algorithm. So to review, we've been talking about the brute force method for finding the best Hamiltonian circuit for a graph. And the brute force method is guaranteed to find that best circuit. We don't have any doubt because we are looking at all possible solutions. And then we look at that list of solutions and we pick out the best one. But the problem is that as our graph gets larger, this method becomes very time consuming. So instead of using that method, what we're going to start considering in this lecture is an algorithm, which is a step-by-step -step process for finding a solution to a problem. And our algorithms will be easier to use than the brute force method, but unfortunately they won't be guaranteed to find that best solution. So the first algorithm is going to be called the nearest neighbor algorithm, and it's based on a common sense idea. At every vertex, you choose the closest vertex that you haven't visited yet. So here's an example. We've got a graph which shows the time that it takes in minutes to travel between five different locations. And we want to use the nearest neighbor algorithm to find a low cost Hamiltonian circuit that starts at vertex B. So here's how this is going to work. So starting at B, what we do is we look at the distances, or in this case, the times from B to the other vertices. So it's eight minutes from B to A, seven minutes from B to E, 11 minutes from B to D, 12 minutes from B to C and we pick out the lowest number. In this case, that's seven. So that means we're gonna travel along this edge from B to E, and now we're at E. And now from E, we look at all of the different travel times to the other vertices. So now it's 10 minutes from E to A. We don't wanna go back to B because we haven't been to the other locations yet. Remember, we're looking for a Hamiltonian circuit, which means we wanna visit all of the locations exactly once before we return to our starting point. So we don't want to go back to B. E to C is 13 minutes. E to D is 14 minutes. So because the lowest of those numbers is the 10, that means we're going to travel along this edge from E and go up to A. And now we're at A. Again, we don't want to go back to B yet because that's our starting point and we haven't been everywhere yet. We don't want to go back to E because we were just there. So the only options for where we can go are C and D. And again, we look at these travel times. It's 15 minutes from A to D, 16 minutes from A to C. So we're going to take the lowest of those numbers, which is the 15, and go from A to D, travel along that edge. Now, there's only one place that we haven't been yet, and that's C. So the only number we need to consider is that 5. So there's no choices. We've got to go to C. And then now we've been to all of our locations, so the last step will be to go back to the starting point. And so there's the circuit that we get using this algorithm. So is this the best solution, right? That's the solution that we got. We went from B to E and then to A and then to D and then to C and then back to B. If we add up those five numbers, we get a cost for this circuit of 49 minutes. But unlike the brute force method, because we didn't look at all possible solutions, we don't know if this is the best solution. We don't have any way of knowing how this compares to the different ways that we could have walked through these five vertices. And it turns out that we didn't find the best solution. We don't really have a good way of knowing this without going back and using the brute force method, but it does turn out that there is a slightly better circuit that only costs 47 rather than the 49 that we found. So again, there's a trade-off here using this nearest neighbor algorithm. Here's the algorithm step by step. From that starting vertex, you're going to choose the edge with the smallest cost and use that as the first edge in your circuit. And then we keep going, choosing among the edges that connect from the current vertex to vertices that you have not yet visited. Right? and you choose the lowest cost one. When you visited every vertex, then finally at the end, you return to the starting vertex. So the advantages of the nearest neighbor algorithm is that it's easy and quick to use. It's much faster than the brute force method, and it's what we call heuristic. So heuristic is just a fancy word that means that it uses a common sense idea. This idea of, oh, you want to travel to these different locations, always go to the closest one from where you're at. But the disadvantages of the nearest neighbor algorithm is that it doesn't always give you the best solution. And in fact, sometimes if we get very unlucky, it gives us a terrible solution. So even though it's a common sense idea, we really don't have any way of knowing whether or not the answer that we get is any good. And the starting point matters. In our example, in this graph, we started at B, but if we had started somewhere else, for example, if we had started over here at vertex E, we would have found a different circuit. So if you want to give that a try, pause the video and see if you can get that. 
but in fact, starting at the at vertex E gives us that best circuit that we had earlier in the video. But again, there's no real way to know that. There's no way to know what is a good starting point from just looking at the graph and looking at the labels. All right, let's try another example. So let's consider this graph, which shows the distance in miles between five different locations. And let's use the nearest neighbor algorithm to find a path that starts at C, visits every location, and then returns to C. If you want to try this on your own before watching me walk through it step by step, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can work this out. But we're starting at C, and so again, what that means is we're going to look at the distances, in this case these are distances in miles, from C to the other locations. So we're looking at this 36 from C to B, 34 from C to A, 43 from C to E, and 50 from C to D. And among those four numbers, we're just going to choose the lowest number, which in this case is 34. So that means our first step is to walk along this edge from C to A. And now we're at A. So we look at the distances from A to the other locations. Again, we don't want to visit any place that we've already been until we're ready to return to the start. So now we're looking at from A to B is 23, from A to D is 30, and from A to E is 29. The lowest of those numbers is 23, so we go from A to B. Now we're at B. So from B, there's only two places we can go, namely E and D. It's 28 miles from B to E, 21 miles from B to D, so we go to D. That's the lower number. So B along this edge, cost 21, gets us to D. The only place we haven't been yet is E, so we've got to go from D to E, costs us 44 miles, and then finally we've been everywhere, so now we can return to our starting point, which costs 43. So that's the result that we get from using our nearest neighbor algorithm. So next time we're going to be talking about another algorithm. The nearest neighbor algorithm is not the only algorithm that we can use. The other algorithm we're going to talk about is also heuristic, is also based on a common sense idea. And like the nearest neighbor algorithm, it will be pretty quick to use, but it's not guaranteed to give us the best solution.